Now welcome to another lightning response video where I'm again going to try and answer several questions here but let's start with this one and give it a bit more of an in-depth response from Colin Sierra who asked Hey Thor, short question with potentially a long answer. How would you do a new project centered around the old Republic era? Would you do a movie, movies, series, books, etc? Would you focus on Revan and the Exile or another character and time frame? And what changes would you make, if any? It's a subject that I talk about with a lot of my Star Wars friends, and personally I feel it has everything Disney would want and can please the fans if handled correctly, and it just baffles me why they don't seem to even want to acknowledge it though, given their hit and miss track record. I'm personally glad they haven't as the stories of Revan and the Exile and all those around them are some of my favorites, so I'm personally happy they haven't tampered with them yet, but still curious to hear your elevator pitch. Okay, so my maybe a little longer than an elevator pitch idea for something set in the Old Republic era, and yes, this will sound very Game of Thrones-like, intentionally so, there is a reason why that was one of the most watched shows of all time, but it would be a big-budget, multi-season series, like five seasons, maybe more, that spanned a sizable chunk of time, perhaps a hundred to a few hundred years, maybe even a little more, which would then make it a multi-generational story, one that would let me play into one of the very core themes of Star Wars quite nicely, that of course being family. I'd primarily follow a few different families then, though not too many, maybe four or five in total. I don't exactly know, unless I would sit down and start to write it. I'd certainly have one be a very rich, non-traditional family who only cares about wealth and power and gaining it at any cost. They'd, of course, already have a great deal of influence in the Senate and would seek it within the Jedi Order as well, seeing them seeing the Force as kind of this ultimate means of control in the galaxy. There would then be another family that was perhaps part of a very old and extremely traditional monarchy, one that controls a rather large sector of space and has multiple planets and billions of people, as well as a rather significant military force, maybe needed because they are closer to the Outer Rim and there are some rogue elements out there, shall we say? Problem is, their people are getting tired of the old ways and they want things to change, they want for them to join the Republic, and so they are losing their power, this family is losing their power, and they fear the future. They fear the future for their people as well as for themselves. One of the family members is then Force-sensitive and turns to the Sith to help save their monarchy. We could then have a more or less average Mandalorian family that is part of a larger Mandalorian clan. I think the Mandalorians would have to be a part of this. And perhaps they have a child who is force sensitive and they have kept that hidden because they know their people are not fond of the Jedi. But eventually he runs away and seeks out the Jedi to be trained because, also in secret, he's always admired them and always wanted to be a Jedi and felt like that was his destiny, essentially. He's also been a bit of an outcast among his own kind, among the Mandalorians. So again, he runs away, the Jedi take him in, but they don't know he's a Mandalorian, he gets trained, but eventually the Mandalorians find out that they have him, and this, uh, this causes some problems, shall we say, because the Mandalorians feel like he must have been abducted and brainwashed, but of course he will insist that's where he belongs. We could then have this dirt-poor family of farmers, essentially, that thanks to laws passed by the Senate, which happen thanks to that very rich family and their influence over the Senate, that is kind of forced to contact the Jedi Order about their child, who is clearly very Force-sensitive, and they essentially kind of have to sell him to the Jedi, or uh, get compensated by the Jedi for their sacrifice for giving up their child, even though they normally would never ever consider doing something like this under any circumstance, because maybe they're not fond of the Jedi, or perhaps they see family as this thing that should never ever be broken, no matter what that child that they were uh, forced to sell could one day be sort of contacted and or influenced by that rich family, which was the reason they were sold in the first place, unbeknownst to them, of course. They will have no idea the circumstances they were delivered to the Jedi Order in, and they sort of become an agent for them within the Jedi Order. And in the long run, they'll go on to be a key part in the downfall of that very wealthy family. Basically, one day their greed will come back to haunt them, you could say. Finally, I think we'd need one more family. It would be this kind of crime family on the rise that lives out in the Outer Rim. And it would be very, very easy to have them sort of mix and mingle with all the other families. And you would absolutely want to have an eye into the criminal underworld during a series like this, I think. But anyway, that's the rough idea I came up with while sitting here. And this is how I would basically kick the whole thing off. Obviously, there would be a ton more to it. That's just the general idea, the general outline for the story I have, or for the first part of the story, the first generation of the story, really. 
But where I'd take it from there, I would obviously have to sit down and give it a hell of a lot more thought. Either way, one of my main goals with it would be to play into one of the other main ideas or themes of Star Wars, that being how the choices we make can have an impact not only on ourselves or those close to us, but sometimes many people or even the entire galaxy can feel the effects of the decisions we've made, and all too often made for our own selfish goals or personal gain, or even because we thought we were in the right. Furthermore, this wouldn't be attached to anything else we'd seen thus far in the Old Republic, not Revan or the Exile or anything else like that, though they may be mentioned or alluded to in passing, because I would keep all that stuff canon but not want to cross paths with it for good or bad. I'd want this to more or less be its own thing. Not everything always needs to directly connect to everything else. But anyway, yeah, that's my three minute or whatever that was pitch with what I would do or what I could come up with for the Old Republic. And with a bit more time, I think I could come up with a lot more and or better stuff. I don't think it'd be that hard to create an absolutely epic Old Republic series. And if I were Disney, that is 100% what I would do with this time period. But for now, let's move on to some more questions, starting with this one from Dark Star, who asked, Hey Thor, do you think we'll ever get a super scale Jedi Republic vs. Sith Empire with massive fleet battles and entire planets being consumed by the dark side, like in the pre-Disney stuff? Pretty sure this is Old Republic I'm thinking of. And yes, that sounds very Old Republic-like, and I think I could sneak that into my aforementioned series, all that kind of fun stuff. As for will we ever see it in any kind of Disney Star Wars? I mean, probably. I, I have to imagine at some point they will go to the Old Republic, and they have to realize the potential there to do something kind of big and epic, especially with large-scale Jedi versus Sith battles, large-scale space battles as well. So yeah, I think we're going to see... a. Uh, I think we'll see that eventually, how good it'll be from Disney. Well, that's the real question. Next up here, we have this question from Vetterlit Torf, who asked, Hey Thor, do you think Cal Kestis was wrong to enter a romantic relationship with Marin, since attachments like that lead to fear of loss and thus can cloud his judgment and make him much more vulnerable to the dark side? Well, as much as I personally may enjoy Cal and Marin together, I kind of root for them. The Jedi mindset in me says that it just can't work. We've already seen um, Cal sort of unravel a bit in the second game. I don't want to get too spoiler-ish here in case you haven't played them. But yeah, I think he's absolutely going to be tempted more by the dark side in the third game. And if Marin isn't a big part of that, I will be surprised and disappointed. All right, and now we move on to this one from DJ Cody, who asked... Hey Thor, you talked a bit about the Fallen Order games in a recent video, and you have some great opinions about Grey Jedi, and I was wondering what your thoughts are on KOTOR 2. How do you feel about the deconstruction of both Jedi and Sith philosophy? What do you think of what it presents? How might its approach be used or ignored for things like the Acolyte or future projects? Okay, so I have not played KOTOR 2 since it first came out, roughly 20 years ago now, and at that point in time, I was working a ton of hours, I had a lot going on in my personal life, so I didn't really have much time to commit or devote to the game. I played it very choppy, I played a little here, a little there, didn't play it for a week or two, played some more. So, I would be lying to you if I said I remembered that story very well. And I know probably a couple of years ago at this point, I said I was going to replay the game, and I would give my thoughts on pretty much this very question, and recently I have decided I want to invest more time in playing some games, playing some old school Star Wars games, and this one is very much towards the top of the list, so hopefully in a couple weeks or a couple months I will have a good answer to these questions. Alright, let's now move on to this one from Joel McKinley who asked, Hey Thor, I don't see anyone talking about the Alpha and Omega, the Alpha being Boba's clone designation, and I'm guessing Django gave him his actual name versus Omega, who probably kept her clone designation. Star Wars often has biblical references, and the Alpha and Omega refers to Jesus being the beginning and the end. This can't be just a random occurrence. Where do you think that goes? Um, I certainly agree with you that it is not an accident that she was named Omega, that it was very deliberate and part of some sort of plan. What that plan is, it's probably going to entail her being the culmination of everything that the Kaminoans have been trying to do. I think Nala Se created Omega for a purpose of some kind. I don't know what that purpose is exactly. I am thinking and hoping we will see that in Season 3 of The Bad Batch, but I don't think initially the idea here was she's created to be part of Project Necromancer with Palpatine and all that. I think she was made for an entirely different purpose, 
and that was something the Kaminoans had going, or maybe just Nalase. But I'm not entirely sure where they're going with this, which is kind of nice to not know where they're going with this. Okay, let's now move on to this one from Jordan Asigil, who asked, Hey Thor, what do you think would make a good villain-focused show or story? A second question, do you think Disney leaks things like this to get people talking about their shows? I wonder if they have an all-free publicity is good publicity philosophy going. First of all, I think it's difficult to make a good villain-focused show in Star Wars because the villains are all too often Sith, and Sith are supposed to be essentially the epitome of evil, of selfishness, so you don't want to make a show where you are kind of portraying the Sith as sympathetic. I've talked about that a lot in regards to the Acolyte and what I fear about the show, that they are somehow going to make the plight of the Sith a sympathetic one, that somehow the Jedi are responsible for them or some such nonsense. Anyway, I just think it's hard to do a good villain show in Star Wars, and I think that's one of the reasons they've avoided it. I think certainly the Plagueis novel is an excellent read and would make an excellent show. But again, even that is kind of taking a perspective of the bad guys, and traditionally I think that is something Star Wars has wanted to avoid and should avoid most of the time, if that makes sense. As for the second part of the question, absolutely Disney leaks things from time to time to get some sort of reaction from people to see if it's a good reaction, a bad one, or whatever it might be. And I don't know that it's an exactly all free publicity as a good publicity philosophy that they have going, as much as it's just kind of trying to test the waters. They know social media is a good place to see what people are thinking and feeling, even though oftentimes it feels like they have no clue what Star Wars fans are thinking or feeling or wants. All right, and the final question comes to us from Seth Young, who asked, Hey Thor, why do you think shows like The Bad Batch and The Mandalorian are acting so secretive about bringing Palpatine back? We already know where this is all heading, yet they're treating it like some new earth-shattering storyline. It's really making it hard to stay interested in these shows. I just can't take them seriously when they keep reminding me of Somehow Palpatine Returned. Uh, I think it's all a matter of just trying to make it as mysterious and as interesting as possible, to make it as exciting as possible, even though we know where it's all going, we know what this is all going to lead to. It's just them trying to build it up as much as they can because they know <laughs> the initial letdown of it, right? They know how terrible that explanation was in The Rise of Skywalker, that it has become maybe the biggest meme in all of Star Wars, that somehow Palpatine returned. So yeah, it's just a matter of them trying to salvage it. So they're trying to, again, make it interesting. And for a lot of people, it isn't interesting. Well, that's going to be all I got for you this time. Now it is your turn to take to the comments below and tell me what you think of anything I had to say here. What do you think about my Old Republic series or show? Or what do you think about anything else I had to say to any of these other questions? Or tell me how you would answer them. Whatever the case may be, leave those comments below and let's talk some Star Wars. Or you can, of course, ask a question for a future lightning response video. You just got to start your comment off with Hey Thor and then ask away. But until next time, thanks for watching.